Okay, hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of On the Rest from Off the Cuff. Today we have another release from the brand Seahome. Now, this is a brand new Swiss made brand. Uh, I recently reviewed their Offshore Diver, so make sure and keep an eye out for that. Um, this particular watch is actually, you know, kind of their take on an everyday watch, an adventurer's watch. Um, and I'm really impressed that basically, you know, it does still have all that same great technology that they had in the diver but it's now apparent also here um, in kind of their field watch model so a little bit about this brand they're swiss made um, and they really focus on combining really overbuilt quality with clean and simple designs something that's uh you know near iconic if not iconic in its own little way there um, and very bold i mean as you can see the graphics here this is a really bold look um, it, it pops and it helps with legibility but it also helps in uh, being able to recognize the watch and being able to recognize the brand um, and then as far as design goes of course uh, they they this watch was designed in collaboration with the white brand design uh, in Switzerland which of course are multi red dot award-winning designers so you know that uh, they pretty much have uh, what it takes to make something that looks good um, and the nice thing is that they actually uh, also paired up to make sure that this thing actually um, performs well as well. It doesn't. It's not just a pretty face. Um, you know, it, it actually was set to exceed those uh, ISO standards. Um, so as far as the shock resistance, it's actually three times more shock resistant than the ISO, the ISO standards, and we have seven times more anti-magnetic than the ISO standards require. And then, of course, as far as depth rating goes, they actually test this uh, up to 125% of that 200 meters water resistance. So it's definitely going to be good for 200 meters um, and then some, So which is really nice. So 200 meters with confidence, if you will, um, you're going to have that there. And then, of course, this brand is also... Also, uh, as far as the design house, they're the same design house that, you know, uh, designed uh, the Victorinox Inox. So just to kind of give you an idea of, uh, you know, their kind of thought and their aesthetic, I think the Sea Home definitely kind of takes it to, a, to another level as far as being an automatic watch and, and you know, adding in, uh, you know, the shock resistance for an automatic is definitely a lot tougher. And then the anti-magnetism aspect, and then of course the depth rating, which I think is really great. So this is just a really overbuilt timepiece. And I think that's really where the extra money goes um, on this piece here. It's not in, you know, some crazy, uh, extra fine chamfers that they have to cut. Um, it's not in a bunch of advertising uh, that they're gonna have to shoot. Um, it's really in a lot of the testing that they've had to put these watches through to make something that's very, very capable um, to back up the look. I mean, you know, I have some Seikos uh, that really have that great outdoor adventure look and you know what, they are they don't have a screw down crown and uh, they're quote unquote 100 meters water resistance, right? Um, so it's really nice to kind of have something that's super capable like this. Um, it, it almost is, uh, to me, I'd say akin to, you know, a Zen watch. It's, it's a watch for a professional. Um, and, and I think that's definitely uh, what they've achieved here. So of course, as an everyday watch, some key common characteristics in design language uh, is really you just want that kind of versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes, which I think this watch pulls off really, really well. So let's go ahead and take a closer okay, look. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a closer look. As you can see, that blue dial is absolutely stunning. The way that it plays with the light is a lot different than your typical sunburst dial because it does have that directional brushing. So like at this angle, it looks completely black blacked out and then it has like a nice gradient transition to it where it almost looks like a two-tone style dial there which i think is just really great uh such awesome execution on that everything's super sharp on there and i do mean that in the best of ways now a little bit about uh you know this particular piece the rover field watch it comes on bracelet plus it does come also with a custom nato strap it has a three-year transferable warranty and also a complimentary five-year service which is really really great 
Um, now the retail price on these as it stands right now from their website is actually $18.95. You can buy them direct and it does come with complimentary overnight shipping. Um, so although that is uh, I think pretty expensive especially for the watches that I review on this channel, um, there's actually a lot of special things going on with this watch um, and I think that if you are on board with the aesthetics um, as far as execution goes um, you really won't be disappointed so if you think this is a great looking watch um, you know I, I think that uh, this definitely it, it could be a great watch for you um, because the way that it's built the way that it's tested the the uh, just the kind of the idea behind it is also um, just that good that I, I think you can uh, really really uh, find a winner here and something that you could wear every day. I mean this blue is so versatile in the way that it is I mean it just literally can be a black dial <laughs> As you can see or it can be a nice blue dial and then like the light hits it and it can be a little bit brighter and and more of a summery Vibe to it. So I mean really really nicely done there It does have a 41 millimeter diameter case with an 11.6 millimeter height 50 millimeters about lug to lug and then uh, of course everything is uh, stainless steel and brushed except for this one super highly polished uh, little bevel right there that goes all around the bezel which I thought was a really nice touch and look at that sharp transition I just you know I could just imagine you know uh, if they were to throw some of those bevels on uh, the edges here and then on the ends of the bracelet but you know what that's really not what they're trying to go after um, so but it does let me know that they're definitely more than capable as you can see by the sharp transition there on that bezel uh, really nicely sloped so as far as the movement goes, this is powered by Eslita SW200-1 and it does have that nice custom date disc there so that the date is parallel um, and it's super unobtrusive and it's just there and when you need it, you can see it and when you don't need it, you're not paying attention and it kind of drops off the face of the watch, which I think is really great. Now, as far as the dial, you know, it does have that great metallic look. The uh, indices and everything are just printed on there. There's nothing applied. Um, also, that means there's nothing to bust off. Um, and then you do have that nice chapter ring there that's all indexed. Everything lines up absolutely perfectly. And one thing you'll also notice is that the hands are all the right length, which is just, that's just the best, right? I mean, look at that seconds hand it just hits every one of those spots there then the minute hand you know it's just it, it's it's right up there it just goes all the way out to that chapter ring and everything just lines up which is super nice um, and it's not something that you always get sometimes the, the hands can be short and you kind of have to look at it at an angle and really push it out that's not the case here and then of course we can appreciate this beautiful uh, you know double dome sapphire there you can tell that it's domed underneath because there's very minimal distortion so it has a little bit of a dome on top slight dome then slight dome underneath and it almost has a kind of box domed uh, chamfer here with that soft bevel um, around the edge of the sapphire uh, really nicely done and then of course this crown it's a big crown it's super nice this thing is so buttery um, the threading on there I don't know what it is there's something about it that just is super smooth uh, you know I don't normally do this on the channel but I just this one was just worth mentioning you just kind of push it in a little bit then you screw it down of course I have gloves on it makes it a little harder but somehow it just finds its way like there's so many watches that I have that you can't do that with with gloves I can't just b blindly turn and then they're just gonna lock in like the threads on here are just completely silky and buttery which I really 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 appreciate and and again it's just those little tactile things that you can do when you have when you hold the watch when you use the watch that lets you know the qualities there versus when you just kind of see it in a picture even if it's a cool picture on Instagram with a great filter and it's an action shot and all that stuff you know what um, when you have it in hand and you're using it and you feel it on your wrist it just gives you more and tells you more of that story so really really impressive from that standpoint
As far as the bracelet goes, it is 21 uh, millimeter lug width, which isn't the greatest, but you know what? Um, I've, I've kind of come to grips with that. It has a really nice taper here for this three link oyster style. Everything's screwing solid, really nice. And you even have a uh, stamped little diver's extension there, which is cool too. As you can see, case back, very simple, minimal. Really nice, let's go ahead and get it on the wrist. Okay, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this bad boy wears super well. Um, definitely wraps around the wrist really nicely with those nice curved links. Although they are a bit long, thanks to that curve, they actually do fit quite comfortably. And as you can see, just moving my wrist here just a little bit really changes the color of the dial and affects it uh, really nicely so it really plays well to whatever environment you're in um, so really just a great kind of everyday piece so legible I'd say that uh, you know um, the the um, the scale reminds me more of probably a traditional pilot's watch versus a traditional field watch, which, a fi you know, normally field watches are a little bit smaller, pilot watches a bit bigger, um, and you have a little bit more uh, visibility there. Um, so, you know, that said, this on wrist definitely reminds me a lot of my Oris uh, Big Crown Pro Pilot, um, and that's definitely not a bad thing, considering that this is kind of uh, one of the initial offerings from a brand new uh, micro brand. So really cool. Um, and you know what? I figured I'd take this time to actually kind of show you guys the really interesting and different presentation that the Seahome watches actually come in. They come in this uh, really nicely milled and machined um, tube here all solid and then you do have this really awesome little compass there uh, which is pretty nice as you can see it's it works <laughs> I'm trying to kind of get it to move a different way it's spinning around and it's pretty much uh, you know it, it's fine it's gonna find its way back to north so pretty cool there um, and then inside what you get here, um, let me just balance that there, Ooh, don't roll away, don't roll away, don't, okay, seriously though, don't roll away, maybe if I, no, maybe, yes, okay, it's wanting to roll away guys, it's, it's just, it's gone, come on, <laughs> all right, anyway, um, so here inside this roll, which is really nicely done, uh, you know, you'd have the watch in here, and then you have these really cool NATOs, which are really, of course, overbuilt as well, signed really nicely, super nice hardware, as you can see, really nice soft uh, there, and then, of course, you have your strap changing tool, everything's branded, got the Seaholm name there, and then... Yeah, I just thought that was a pretty cool little touch, and then it actually is useful for traveling. Um, you don't necessarily have to throw it inside um, the canister there. You could actually just take this with you because everything folds over, buttons up, and then it's, you know, really nice. You could just take this and throw it into a bag uh, if you're traveling, or if you're worried about it, you could add a little bit more extra safety and actually put it uh, in here. So I thought that was a really nice touch and kind of worth mentioning that, you know, again, it just kind of ties into the whole um, overbuilt theme. Now, does everybody need something like this? No, but for the people that do, this is a really nice incentive. Um, same thing here, you know, does everybody need that extra water resistance, shock resistance, uh, magnetic resistance? Now, um, probably not everybody needs it, but you know what? The guys that do, that's an amazing incentive to get this watch, um, especially at the pricing uh, when you consider that, right? So if you have the right need and the right niche for this piece, um, I think it could definitely be a deal. Otherwise, if you're just buying it because you think it looks cool, you know, and, and all the testing and, and kind of the brand ethos don't mean that much to you, then this probably, you know, this probably won't be the watch for you. Um, but I think if you're looking for something that really uh, is some, you know, it represents uh, the brand really being behind their product, you know, with that transferable warranty and everything and just, you know, the free servicing, um, 
I think that's great and it just shows that they really believe in their product and I'm really excited to see what a brand like this will do next. They also do have a chronograph model so they've they've definitely got some cool things in the wings and then uh, you know uh, who knows right if these sell well then you know the next thing they roll out uh, who knows what else uh, they could change or, or uh, potentially bring to the table. So let's go ahead and get some uh, loom shots going here. Okay let's go ahead and hit the lights. As you can see, BGW9 Loom blowing, just a glowing super nicely, super bright blue. Um, it has that nice cool tone to it there, very modern. Um, and then the nice thing is, of course, when you're looking at it in daylight, it actually, as you guys remember, showed uh, a red as very, very white versus if a lot of times with C3, which is really nice and bright as well, um, in the daylight, it's gonna have a bit of a green tint to it. So I think really nice. Compromise there with the BGW9. Let's get some low light transition going. So as you can see, really nice finishing there, the way the light is playing off of those very uniform brushings. So my studio lights definitely do a very good job of, you know, simulating kind of that, uh, outdoors, full sunlight, full mass kind of uh, look to it. Uh, it does wash out a lot of the details, but the nice thing about these low light transition shots are you do get a chance to kind of dive into the details a little bit, get an idea of what this watch is gonna look like when you're getting in your, your car, you know, coming in from outdoors, maybe just a quick little transition. You can see the way the light just plays on that finishing. And if it didn't have great finishing, it's going to show here. But as you can see, that finishing is really nice and uniform. So shows really well. And then, of course, the loom is nice and bright, which is great. So let's go ahead and hit the lights and get some final thoughts. Now, you know, on the wrist, of course, it has that very substantial and purposeful feel. It definitely feels like it's a watch uh, on a mission. <laughs> it's not just there uh, to tell time, um, it's there to tell you time uh, across a very, minute, very many different avenues. Um, and then, you know, again, it kind of, to me, it wears more like a traditional pilot's watch than it does a field watch uh, as far as like the scale goes, but I think it is, is really, really nice. And then of course, most pilot's watches don't have a bracelet. Uh, so I think it's pretty cool that this pilot's watch, uh, or you, were, you could say, um, does, right? Because it's still instantly and automatically legible and it hits those same dockets. Um, as far as model variants go, there is a black dial, of course, um, blue, and then also a white dial option. And the nice thing is, you know, I mentioned they do come with their own NATOs, and uh, they do like the color play options for you. So like one of the things that's nice about that white dial is that it comes on this mint NATO. Look how nice that is, that mint color. Super nice. And then actually for the diver, I didn't get a chance to show you guys this, but on the diver model, they actually do have a silver uh, watch uh, color and it has a silver, um, you know, really nice NATO that comes with it. So I thought that was kind of worth mentioning there. It's just those little things, right? And uh, there's a lot of brands that are bigger brands, you know, um, you know, like uh, Bell and Ross and those types of brands where uh, you're paying a lot um, for the name and they don't, you know, the, the testing and the passion, that's not necessarily always there. I'm not knocking Bell and Ross in any way, but I mean, as far as like their value proposition in the market, I think people understand that the value is, is in their marketing, um, not necessarily in anything that's going into their watches. Um, you know, they do use nicer uh, grade movements that are thinner generally, but I mean, they're not but you know, they don't have a huge amount of water resistance or anything like that. And, uh, basically they have a lot of watches that look like divers, um, that aren't very water resistant. And then the ones that they have that are hardcore, you know, then those are really hardcore, but you know, some of the more classic aesthetics 
I think, um, you know, they they just don't play the same way that this one plays. So uh, I think this is a really cool piece. Um, you know, it fits really well on my wrist. If you have a really big wrist and maybe you've been looking for something like uh, uh, Zen 556, but it's too small for you. I mean, honestly, my Zen 556, I own two of them, and they do feel a little bit small at times. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Like, I kind of have to figure out what type of clothing I'm going to wear with a watch at that scale because um, depending, you know, it's just going to make the watch look small and uh, that's that's not great, you know. Um, so at 41 millimeters, this definitely is more of a full size watch. Um, I wouldn't say it's oversized by any means unless you have like a six and a half inch wrist. Um, but I think definitely for seven and a quarter and up, this thing is going to wear just like a dream. and. Um, you know, let's say you have an eight inch wrist, this is totally going to be the watch for you then if, if you know, you've always liked the, the Explorer or, you know, the Zen 556 or even like a Seiko Alpinist. You just always thought that kind of overly capable um, everyday watch, you know, that if that thing was, was kind of always your dream, uh, I think this can bring this to you at kind of a nice larger scale. Or if you just like pilot's watches and, um, you know, you love a good bracelet, but you can never get a pilot's watch on a good bracelet, I mean, here you go. <laughs> this definitely fits a very similar aesthetic as well, you know, field watches and, uh, you know, um, pilot's watches have always been kind of running around in the same circles as far as their aesthetic, you know, using numerals and, and similar typeface and, of course, having a big expansive uh, dial and, and uh, having everything on there with a purpose and, and a need. So uh, I think that's definitely something to consider as well. You know, comparable models, like I mentioned, the Big Crown Pro Pilot uh, kind of meets Rolex Explorer meets Zen 556. Uh, as far as that goes. Bottom line, this is a Swiss brand that focuses really on the luxury of capability. So these watches are just so capable that it's kind of a luxury that you can wear it pretty much in any situation. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do hit like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.